بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله عدد خلقه رضا نفسه وزناته عرش ومداد كلماته ومنتهى علم جمع الشعر وخلق وضرع وبرع علم غيب شهرة الرحمن الرحيم المالك الكدوس العزيز الحكيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وخليله وأرسله بهدى ودين الحق يظهره على دين كل الكريهات المشركين ما بعد إن شاء الله شريعة الله إن شاء الله ما يجينا بقى من شيل أوت الوال لك شوي يوم يجي الله شوي في بعض إن شاء الله وقال الله سبحانه وتعالى في الكتاب ألف لام ميم ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب ويقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة خير بالآخرة هم يوقنون إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم عن ذرتهم أم لم تذرهم لا يؤمنون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran and I'm going to be brief because my focus is something else. In the beginning ayats, really in the first 20 ayats of Surah Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out that there's two types of people. You're either a believer or you're a Catholic. It's one or the other. There's no in-between. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in when it comes to kufr, there is a, a sub subdivision. It's two, you know, it's two, it's two divisions and two types of people, and there's a sub subdivision when it comes to kufr, and we're going to elaborate on that today. You can recognize a believer based on the outward signs, as the aqid of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah, a person that is Muslim, they are Muslim unless they show display two things, right? A statement off of the tongue that is something that is contrary to what you know what we're taught by Islam, or they do an action that is contrary that we're taught by Islam. Outside of that, no matter how corrupt they are, they're still Muslim. With Iman, Iman is internal. It's an affirmation. The, the affirmation, the belief in Islam is affirmation. It is what brings you into Islam, right? And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he starts off this, the, the surah after the first ayah, alif, lam, mim, right? When one is reading that, he should be submitting his intellect and everything over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you don't even have the answer for what alif, lam, mim means, right? However, the second part, the next ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا فِيهِ هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Right? He said that this is a book that don't have any doubt in it. And it's for the mutaqeen, for the people who are seeking out piety. Okay? Next thing Allah Ta'ala says, And they believe in those things that are unseen. Even if you look, it goes coincide with the hadith of Jibril, where the Prophet Sallallahu was questioned about, uh, 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 what is Iman? Right? And he said, يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Right? Took me to be qadri wa khayrihi wa All right? The belief in Allah, the angels, the books, right? The messengers, right? The day the day of judgment in the qadr is good and is bad, right? All of these things are unseen to the naked eye. You cannot see them, right? Except the Quran. But the previous revelation, you have to believe in them. You have to believe in them. You have to believe that they existed. With the books that they call them now are not them, but you believe that they existed. 
You believe in all of the messengers and prophets. So this requires you to do what? The bil ghaib. You have to believe in that thing that is unseen. So now, with Islam, Islam is all about the outward, right? The Prophet Sallallahu was asked, "Akhbir me an Islam. Inform me what is Islam. Islam is that you do what? Tashhadu an la ilaha illallah Muhammad wa Muhammad al-Rasul. Wa tashhadu an Muhammad al-Rasulullah. That you testify that there's no God but Allah, and that you testify that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi is the Messenger of Allah. Right? This is an action. This is something that you do. You say it as a statement. It's an action." Right? Wa aqimu salat You establish the prayer. Right? You want to zakat. You pay the zakat. You fast the month of Ramadan. Right? You make hajj if you have the ability to make hajj. All of these things are outward. These are a result of your iman, your tasdiq. This is a result of your imam, of you affirming and confirming those things. See, Islam is centered around this. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said at the end of the hadith, had the Jibril, that was Jibril, and he came to teach you your deen. Right? Islam is centered around this. Your entire deen is centered around this. You have your belief. And the belief is what motivates you. Right? It motivates you. As you grow, your belief becomes stronger based off of, based off of, those, of those things of the light. Right? In the beginning of your affair, your belief is strong. How do you know the signs of your belief is strong? It's when you're about to do something that is haram, you remember the hellfire and you avoid doing that thing. When you do something that is permissible, you become happy because you were able to do something that Allah Ta'ala permitted in that or the Prophet says something. And the more, the stronger your iman is, the more consistent you become because you start to seek out those rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then your iman becomes where it becomes like rock solid to the point where you do everything out of the love for Allah Azza wa Jalla. You're not even worried about paradise. You're praying because you love Allah. You're not even worried about anything. You, you follow the sunnah because you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقَنَاهُمْ يُنْفِكُونَ So another sign of those people who believe in the ghaib is their actions. What about their actions? They establish the prayer and they provide, they, they, they give sadaqah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ وَمَا أُنزِلَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ وَبِلَا أَخِرَتِهُمْ يُقِنُونَ Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says about them, he says, that they believe in what was revealed to you, <clears throat> revealed to you, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and what was revealed before you. So you have to believe in the books that was that was revealed previously, right? To minu billahi wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi. You have to believe in the books. So anyway, so Allah subhanahu wa taala he says, and they believe in. He says, what what uh, 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 bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablika. What was revealed to you before them? Wa bila akhirati, right? And they believe in the hereafter with certainty. <coughs> Where you believe in the afterlife with certainty. There's no hesitation. No reluctancy. The more you believe, the stronger your iman is in paradise and what's to come, the less likely you'll commit errors and the more you'll rush to doing good. You won't take any action lightly. And that is what is what is a big problem is that we take actions lightly. You mentioned about sadaqah and you take that up as something that you do, right? Consistently, and you die on that, there's a place in gender for those people who, who give out sadaqah constantly. For a person who is <clears throat> for a person who is always fasting, there's a door in paradise for that person that's always fasting, right? All of these things, these things take place and they take place and they're rewarded with a, with a specific reward. They're rewarded with a specific reward, right? So you have to, you have to understand that. So the more that, the more your iman grows, the more things you do that gets you closer to Allah SWT. You don't need nobody to tell you that your iman is weak. You can tell yourself that. The problem is, is that we're not being honest with ourselves. When we become Muslim, when you're, when you're born and, and given Islam, then you make your life better. You don't become Muslim in order to make your life worse. Many of us, we neglect ourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish us for that. 
So in next in the next two ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions, he says, Inna ladina kafiru sawa'un alayhim a'anzartuhum am lam tudirhum la yu'minun. Right? So now Allah Ta'ala is talking about the disbelievers. He's talking about the disbelievers. Disbelievers, they are those who disbelieve. And it is all the same for them, whether you warn them or you warn them not. Right? Because why? Because they're going to disbelieve. Now just look at the word, look at the word kufr. Right? We understand what the we understand what iman is. But kufr, just li literally in its linguistic meaning, right? It just means to cover something up. It means it's to cover something up. That's what it literally means. And this is why also it can be understood when a person is committing kufr in gratitude, he's covering up that blessing. Because the thing about being un ungrateful, right? The reason why of being ungrateful it is what led uh, Iblis to go to the hellfire, right? It's because of the fact you're denying the benefit, the one that you're gaining benefit benefit from, you're denying that 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 they've given you that that help. You're covering up that reality, right? And you have to understand that Islam it's not only just cerebral knowledge. It's not just knowledge that's that's from the mind, you know, that that decorates the mind. Because if that is the case, Shaitan was the most knowledgeable. But with Islam, that knowledge, it, it requires you and it brings about action. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will refer to certain actions from your jahiliyyah, from your ignorance. And when they're saying from your jahiliyyah, from your ignorance, meaning that it was the actions that you did when you were a Catholic. Right? Now, our jahiliyyah, we kind of like, you know, made it like a fad or a cool word to use. Oh, man, it's just from my jahiliyyah. Right? No, something from your jahiliyyah is bad. And a lot of us bring in a lot of characteristics from our jahiliyyah and how I did, how we deal with our children, right? Some of the things that our parents did wasn't always right. And we shouldn't continue that legacy issue. We should, you know, uh, uh, fact check it up against the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he taught us how to deal with children. Things that we do to our wives, right? Especially those things that resemble from jahiliyyah. That is a sickness, right? That's a sickness. That's a disease. It's like a person that a, a person is being offered a cure for a sickness. We won't take the cure. We want to keep the sickness and just keep coming back to the ER. We just want to keep coming back for it. instead of getting well. We want to just keep going back to it. And the thing is, is that you start to develop an Akita. You start to develop a belief system behind that thing that you won't leave. I have to show that I'm strong because if I don't smack her around, then she won't respect me. Right? You start to develop a psychology behind the actions that you do. See, y'all gotta speak up because if I don't speak up and speak my mind, then this brother gonna think he my father and I ain't gonna let him talk to me like that. Right? All of these things, these things, these are, uh, are psych, uh, 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 psychological things that you build up. And when you build it up psychologically, you act on it. Why do you avoid sin? Why do you do good deeds? Because of your iman. Right? You believe in those things that are unseen, so you start to behave, and then you establish the prayer. And then you give from the, you give from what Allah Ta'ala has provided from you. Right? So all of this, this is this is where this comes from, it stems from it. And when you want to do actions of jahiliyyah, you have a belief system that's connected to it. If I want to get high, what do I want to do? I want to alter my mind. It feels good. So what do you do? You do those things that will get you high. Right? But if I want to get high in Jannah, which is one of the things that Allah Ta'ala promises you, right? So getting high in this dunya is only bad. But getting high in Jannah, you're going to get high in Jannah. You're going to be nice. Right? I can't wait for the day. Especially when you read about them eyes. You're going to be sitting on lofty couches. Right? You know? You're going to, you're going to have servants. They're going to be feeding you. Right? They, you know... Your, 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 your husband, he gonna be like buff, you know, muscular, you know, he looking like one of them boys with the oil on, you know, magic mic, <laughs> stuff like <laughs> right? You know, you know, your wives is gonna, you know, it, it's, it's just all good. Everything is all good. You sitting on the couch, you know, I don't know if you're gonna have your, you know, your big Cuban, you know, Salam Muhammad, <laughs> right? You're like, oh, you know, it's some real jazzy type stuff, you know, you're real fly with it. It's uh, it, yeah, Habibi. Come dance for me, baby. Right? Because that's what paradise is all about. But you're going to do a little struggle. You're going to have to avoid some things. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us that paradise is surrounded by hardships. Right? 
It's a it's a sigil of mu'min. Paradise is a prison for the believer. Why? Because you have restrictions on yourself. Well, Jannah to the Kafir, it's a it's paradise for the disbeliever. Never forget that. These are the words of the Prophet Sallallahu When you, you think you down and out, sometimes we get like little kids, you know, that's on punishment. And we looking out the window like, man, I wish I could go out and go play with Run Run and all that. Man, they having fun, but I got in trouble in school. You can't go out. Well, when you start looking at looking at the things that the disbelievers do, always remember that their reward, that's all they're going to get in this dunya. Because after that, for their disbelief and their disobedience, they're going to get the hellfire. They're going to get punishment. Right? So this is this is the thing we have to remember that Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Radiya Allah ta'ala anhu 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 wa sallam. So now what we want to talk about, we're taking it into the next phase. So you have those, <coughs> when you have disbelievers, you have disbelievers that's outright rejecting Iman. They're rejecting Islam. They're hostile towards you. You know, they want to beat you up when they see you. They can't stand you. It bothers you, right? And this is, this is you know, this is one of the things that you have to take in consideration what Imam Malik says about the Rafida. They hate the Sahabas. Those who disbelieve, they hate to see people See people of Iman And they have a disdain for the Sahabas As if they committed kufr or something Right? You have to be careful of how you how you feel internally Towards your deen Especially when people be like That's not fair The men get to do this and When you start thinking like that get, Be careful Because that's that with that slippery slope It starts to go down It's one thing you just sinful It's another thing you start talking about Allah ain't right It's not fair You're accusing Allah of being unjust you have to be careful what you say. You have to be careful. So the things that our tongue <coughs> can take away the good from us. So anyway, so no matter what you tell these people, they're always going to disbelieve. They're going to reject you. They're going to be hostile towards you, right? All of these, all of these different things. Then there's another group. The second group is <coughs> the second group is the individuals. Who pretend to believe. And Allah is going to start mentioning them in these next ayats. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after he says in that, that last ayat, I read, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاعٌ عَلَيْهِمْ عَنْ ذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ نَمْ تُذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Right? In, in those who disbelieve, it is the same whether you warn them or whether you don't warn them. And sometimes these are, these are characteristics. This is also characteristics and signs of someone that lacks iman. Also, too, we sometimes we have like a literal literalist approach, but it ain't literal enough when it's supposed to be literal. Whether you warn them or you warn them not, you tell a person, hey, <coughs> you need to make salah. If you don't make salah, you know, it's a sin. Whether you warn them or warn them not, they get up, walk away like as if you never said anything. Right. You tell them about salah, they become angry, hostile towards you. What? Leave me alone. Mind your business. Worry about yourself. I'll be left. Only Allah can judge me. And all of these different things that, you know, are that are usually the signs of rejection. The signs of rejection. Right? Now these are these are the characteristics of the disbelievers. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the state of the heart. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says about them, he says that Allah said he's put a seal on their heart. Right? He sealed their heart up. He's made them become deaf. They're not even hearing. Right? Then Allah Ta'ala says about them, he says, Wala abisarihim yishawa. On their sight, they can't even see. They blind. Like they can see. But they can't see. They see images and everything, but they can't see in detail. Right? <clears throat> Allah Ta'ala has for them a punishment. He's, he's planning to punish them. So now Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala goes into the next category of people of kufr are the ones who hide their kufr 
but outwardly they're pleasing to you. Meaning they look like a Muslim, they talk like a Muslim, they dress like a Muslim. You can't call them Muslim. I mean, you can't call them non-Muslim. You can't call them a Catholic. But as long as they're displaying everything about Islam, about them, you can't label them a non-Muslim. That is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But however Allah ta'ala gives you signs about these individuals. So the first thing, and what it is, is that you're not really supposed to be on the lookout for them. But what you're supposed to do is look out for you and make sure you're not one of them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on and he says, in this same story, he says, Woman in Nasi may ya kulu amen nabilahi wal yomile akhiri, wama hum yu abi mu'minin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and the people, there are some of them who say, we believe in Allah in the last day. But what does Allah say? Wama hum bi mu'minin. And they ain't Muslim, they ain't believers. Right? So you see, I'm not just saying this. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Women in Nasi may yakulu. Right? And from amongst some people, there are some who say, right? Amina billahi wal yomil akhiri. I believe in Allah and the last day. There's some that say this. But what does Allah say about them? Wamahum bi mu'minin. But they don't even believe. Why don't they believe? Allah Ta'ala says, يَخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمِنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ Allah Ta'ala says about them, they think that they're deceiving Allah and those who believe. Why is that? Allah just told you why. They don't believe. However, they tell you, I believe in Allah on the last day. Right? They tell you this. But Allah is telling you, look, they think they're deceiving you. They really ain't with you. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on, he says about these people, he says, وَمَا, وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا عَنْ فُسِهِمْ But the only thing they're doing is deceiving themselves, right? وَمَا, وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they don't even peep it, they don't even see it. They don't even peep the game, they lying to themselves. See, one of the things is when you're dealing with different type of people, right? You know, there's, there's good and bad in everything. And one thing I learned from... Being, being in the streets and you start to learn it, especially when you're in the inner cities a lot, the only person that believes a lie of a liar is the liar himself, right? Because eventually you figure them out. The liar, eventually you be like, man, this boy lying, man. He always sitting in the gym, but I, I see the opposite, right? But the liar think he got over on you, yeah, right? You know, so the liar is the one, he think he's stealing from your reality. This is, you know, this is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, a believer can't be a liar. This can't be the characteristic of a believer. Because the believer knows that Allah is al-haq, he sees, he knows the truth. Right? This is what the believer believes. So when you lie, when you're lying, right? You're taking an accountability. You may think, what, what do you think? You're getting past everybody because the angels, like, what did the angels stop writing for you? Right? You think that Allah Ta'ala doesn't see what's going on? So anyway, so Allah, <clears throat> in closing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, no, he says, fi kulubihim marad, Fi kulubihim maradu, fi kulubihim maradun, fazadahum Allahu marada. In their hearts is a disease. In their hearts is a disease. In their hearts is a disease. Think about it. For you to pretend to be a believer, you gotta be going, something gotta be going on inside. Something has to be going on inside. Now, if you remember in the first khutbah, we mentioned about gave glimpses, Allah Ta'ala gave glimpses of it in the ayahs of Iman. You have to believe, right? <laughs> you have to practice Islam, right? That you establish the prayer, right? These things are mentioned. These are Iman and Islam. These are two, two characteristics from Iman and Islam. Then Allah Ta'ala mentioned about kufr. Right? This this thing here is deep because an individual to pretend that he's with you, he got something going on inside. So which means internally he has a marut, right? A disease, a sickness. That sickness can be kufr. Okay? He doesn't believe. We know that it, it ain't could be. He know we know that he doesn't believe, 
but he's going to pretend to believe because he's seeking out something. So he's fearful of the outcome or he's straddling the fence. You don't believe it? Look up Abdullah ibn Ubay, right? He was the hypocrite in Mecca, in, I mean in Medina, and he was upset that the Prophet ﷺ moved to Medina. He straddled the fence his entire life. His entire life, he straddled the fence. Also, arrogance. Arrogance. What is it that caused Shaitan to get, get kicked out of the paradise and get labeled as a kafir? His arrogance. Ana ahsin minhu. Be careful who you think you better than. The disease of the heart. This is why ihsan is very important to someone purifying the heart. Purification of the heart. If you don't remove those diseases, because internally you are full of yourself. This is why you attack it from Iman, then Islam, and then you get down to Ihsan. Why Iman first? Because the true reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to recognize your relationship with your creator. And Tawheed is a relationship and understanding there's a differentiation between the creator and the created. Once you understand that, now you have to understand there's a difference between you and the prophets. Then after that, you have to know about the afterlife. You better know about what's going on in the semiat. Then we move on. Once you got to that semiat, then what's next? Islam. You start learning the rules of fiqh, how to pray. You start learning those things, what is considered apostasy. How does one apostate out of the deen? How to, how to correct that, right? That's with, with regards to shahada, how to pray. Tahara, purification, all of these things that are connected to that. How to pay zakat, how to fast during Ramadan, how to make hajj. Then you get down to ihsan, right? Where you so you're full of yourself. In your heart, nobody's better than you. I think one of the things, and I know it's a statement to build self-confidence, but it's also one of the things to build arrogance. You better love yourself before you love anyone else. Once you start to love yourself to the point where nobody else matters and you start looking down on people, now you're starting to get into the era of sins. Some people get to the point where you get like Fir'aun, when you say, ana, ana rabbuka a'ala, I'm your Lord the Most High. Right? So you have to understand, you have to be able to, this is why we constantly, repeatedly, Iman, Islam, Ihsan. And when a munafik, they're seeking out safety, they're not seeking safety from Allah. They're seeking safety from you because they fear the creation and not the creator. Had they feared the creator, they would have embraced this song. But they fear the creation, so they pretend to be with you. I'm one of y'all, man. Yo, I'm, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about this sickness. He says, Right? He said that Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala said that he'll increase, increase them in their in their disease, right? Allah Ta'ala, he then says, and for them is a painful punishment because they habitually used to lie. And what was their lie? I believe. I believe. But however, because to your eyes is pleasing, that's not our business of what they believe and what they don't believe. It only becomes our business when they make the statement off of their tongue or they do an action that's kufr. So with that, inshallah, we'll stop there. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdi wa shalom wa la ilaha ila anta wa staffu wa tu bulay. Iqam as-salam.